First things first, before we can show you the tools for creating unbelievable documents, we have to get familiar with our work environment or the interface. This is Word 2010, so it shares the common fluent interface that all of Office 2010 utilizes. If you're not familiar with this and want to know more than I'm going to be showing you here, please review our Office 2010 Shared Features series. This is where we tell you everything you need to know about the many tools and features all of the Office applications share in common. By covering all of that in a single course, when we get to these ones that are about a specific application, like this one is for Word, all we have to do is focus on what makes that particular application unique. The Shared Features series provides common ground on which to build all of your Office 2010 skills, whether it's one application or all of them. So assuming you know those basics, let's go ahead and focus on what's different or unique in Word. And of course, we'll do a little bit of review of the general stuff as well, just not a lot in depth. Now, we need to go ahead and open a document. If you're following along, you can open the You Got It Sample Business Plan from your Chapter 1 Project Files folder, which you should have copied onto the desktop. Let me caution you, though, there are two files called You Got It Sample Business Plan. One ends in .doc and the other ends in .docx. Or if you're looking at the file type description, one says it's a Word document and the other says it's a 97-2003 document. We want the one that just says Word document and ends in DOCX. That's the one that's in the current format. We'll be using the other ones at the very end of this chapter. I've gone ahead and actually opened the exact same document, but I've opened it from an email message. It was an attachment because I want to show you something unique as we get started. It's called Protected View, and Protected View is new to Office 2010. When we open an existing document for the first time in Word 2010, especially if it's from a website or it came as an email attachment like mine did, it will open in this protected view. It may also open this way if it contains active content. And active content could be something like it has macros or ActiveX controls or some type of data connection. Now, if you're not familiar with what exactly those things are, that's okay. We'll get to them at the end of the series. We'll also talk about how to customize security settings in the Trust Center. Protected view means while we can still navigate around in this document, if we tried to start editing it, nothing would happen. Upon closer look, we can actually see there's two things here that tell us there's kind of an issue going on. First of all, our ribbon is gone. We're only seeing the tabs. And secondly, we do have this little information bar. This is the one that says that we're in protected view, and it actually tells us why it's in protected view. This is because it originated from an internet location. All we have to do to get it out of Protected View and into our normal editing view is click this button that says Enable Editing. So I'll go ahead and do that now. There we go. We can see the information bar goes away and our ribbon expands. Now that we've done that, the file that I'm currently showing you should be exactly the same as the one you opened from the Project Files folder. Now we can get started with our tour. I know it may not be where everybody usually starts looking, but we're going to start actually at the bottom left side of the screen. The bottom of the screen, of course, is called the status bar. And in Word, there's a lot of really good information here. Starting on the left-hand side, we can see that we're currently looking at page 1 of a 23-page document and that there are about 5,063 words in this document. We also can see a little indicator telling us that there are some questionable spellings in the document. And this last little icon is something that would allow us to begin recording macros very simply right from the status bar. Now those things are going to be there by default. However, in Office 2010, our status bar is customizable. And depending on the type of documents you're working with and the kind of information you want, you might want to right click on the status bar. This is going to give you a whole slew of selections at the top that you can turn on or off. For example, you might want to know where your vertical page position is, or especially if you work with legal documents, what line number are you on? These simply can be turned on or off, and when they're on, you'll see a check mark like we do next to page number, and if they're off, you don't see a check mark. Now you may also notice that on the right hand side there is some other information. This is actually live information. So again, looking at page number, we're currently on page 1 of 23. Not only is the feature on in the status bar, but we can see the information here as well. If you look down, though, you may see that some things are off. So, as an example, if we look at signatures, which is dealing with digital signatures or electronic signatures, we can see that that is currently enabled. But we're not seeing anything for that in the status bar. That's because for this particular document on the right-hand side, we can see that there aren't any digital signatures. So this is kind of a double-edged sword or a two-sided coin, whichever way you want to look at it. 
First of all, the feature needs to be enabled to see it in the status bar, but secondly, it may not show up in the status bar unless it's actually enabled or appropriate for this particular document. So again, as you get familiar with some of the features here, you may take a look at this list and customize the status bar to display the way that you want it to. I'm going to go ahead and press Escape to get out of this little menu and get us back to our regular screen. On the right side of the status bar, you will notice that we have several different buttons for different views, as well as a zoom slider. We're going to talk more about these in detail in the very next lesson, so I'm not going to talk about those right now. Instead, I want to kind of look at the center of our screen. Center of the screen has the document itself, and of course this is going to look different depending on the document that you have open. Right now, this is a letter size, or 8.5 by 11 document. It's in the tall, or the portrait orientation, and it has some text that we can see about a third of the way down the screen. We also have some interface tools, primarily the fact that we have rulers, both vertical and horizontal. And on the right hand side, we also have scroll bars. We will talk about both the scroll bars and the rulers later on as well. So again, this is just kind of your overview. Now let's get back to that all important top of the screen. This of course is where we find the ribbon, the primary interface change that we saw in Office 2007 that is again carried over into Office 2010. Just to review some of the terminology, it is comprised of tabs like the Home tab and the Insert tab. Each of these tabs then has groups, the Clipboard group, the Font group, and the Paragraph group. And within a group, we have options. So we have the Paste option, the Format Painter option, the Bold option, and so forth. On the bottom right of some of our groups, you will see a little down arrow. It's kind of hard to tell that that's what it is. This is called a dialog box launcher. And if we give this a click, it actually brings up any of the tools that we may not be seeing in the ribbon. Remember that just like we didn't have room to see all of the options on toolbars, we still don't have that much room to see them all in the ribbon either. The ribbon does organize them a little bit more logically. But if you don't see an option for a particular topic in the group that you're looking for, so I've looked through font, I've looked through all of the things here and I'm not finding what I want, then I can use that dialog box launcher to bring up the old familiar dialog box that does have all of the options. You shouldn't need to do that very often. Let's go ahead and close the dialog box down. Word is also nice enough to show us one of the galleries, which is very prevalent in all of Office 2010. These are very visual options instead of just giving us a button, so we can actually see what a Heading 2 or a Heading 3 style might look like. We'll do a whole chapter on styles a little bit later on, so of course we'll come back to that. Don't forget that in addition to the ribbon, we also have the QAT, or the Quick Access Toolbar, up at the top of the screen. Both the ribbon and the QAT are customizable, so if you don't like what you're seeing, you can always customize it and put exactly what you want in either of these places in Office 2010. Then of course we have the Colored File tab. In case you didn't notice, the File tab actually is color-coded, so the File tab in Word is the same color as the Word logo is. Not that that's critical, but Microsoft did work to color-code things for us and keep them consistent. When we click on File, this displays the backstage view, which has all kinds of information, primarily what I like to call the out information. In other words, things that have to do with getting information out of this particular program, saving it, saving it as, sending it, as well as other things like information. We'll be using the backstage quite extensively throughout the course. That's kind of your quick overview, though, of all of those elements that are part of the Office 2010 interface and that are shared between all of your applications. Don't forget, though, that there is a right side to the ribbon. And in addition to the Help button, which is a little round circle that has the question mark in it, we also have the ability to collapse the ribbon. So if you think it's taking up too much space, you can give it a click. This brings it back so we can just see the tabs. Then, of course, one option is to just click the tab to display the ribbon again. One last little reminder, if you're a keyboard person like I am, remember that almost everything that you can do in Office 2010 has a related keyboard shortcut. In order to see what some of the hot keys are, you can press your Alt key. I'm going to go ahead and do that a couple of times so you can see it on my screen. As I press and release my Alt key, what you'll see is that it shows the hot keys. So just like we were able to press Alt F to get our file menu, we can still press Alt F to display the backstage view, or Alt H to get to home. This includes shortcuts for our QAT, including simple numbers, Alt 1, 2, or 3, to access those buttons as well. So those just give you a little bit of help and insight if you're worried about what happened to some of the shortcuts from prior versions of Office, or if you're new to Office 2010 and you want to know what those keyboard shortcuts are. 
So we know that Word is looking out for our security with the protected view and that the interface shares the common features of the rest of Office 2010. That should put your mind at ease a little bit. Now, the next thing we're going to do is review the different ways that we can view a document within Word.